Okay, welcome back to MGD 111 Photoshop 1. We're going to continue looking at selection tools in Photoshop. So, um, we looked at the rectangular marquee here. Remember, anytime we have a little triangle in our tools, that means there's similar tools hidden under it. So now we're going to look at the, we're going to hold it down, elliptical marquee tool. And it works very much the same way as the rectangular tool. I can draw an ellipse, and yes, by the way, circle is a form of an ellipse, if you remember that from geometry class. Uh, similar to the way that it works in the rectangular tool, if I hold the shift key down, I can add to my selection. If I hold the option key down, I can take bytes out of my selection. Um, so it works very much the same way. And again, you may be thinking, well, what am I going to do with this particular shape? Well, there's all kinds of cool things that we can do. Um, let me show you a really good example. I'm going to go to a different image here. Uh, this is in your folder too. It's called 67 wheel. No, that's not my car. I wish it was. Uh, let's say I wanted to isolate this silver hubcap from the rest of the picture. Now, uh, I can try to use the elliptical tool on it and just can't seem to get it very close. Hmm, if only there was some way I could get it a little more precise. Well, check this out. Remember we learned how to use the rulers and uh, our guidelines. So I'm going to zoom in just a bit on this picture. I'm going to go up to my top ruler, and remember Command R makes your rulers disappear or reappear. So if you don't have those, bring them out. Uh, I'm going to drag one down. I'm going to put it right on the top of the wheel here. And then I'm going to go to the side here. I'm going to drag one out to the left edge of the wheel here. And I'm going to stop there. Now, I could outline the other side and the bottom of it, but by doing it this way, I give myself a little more flexibility. Now, watch what happens here. I'm going to go to my elliptical tool, and I'm going to put my cursor on the intersection of these two lines, and I'm going to start drawing this ellipse. Now, watch. Mm, it's a little too wide, a little too tall, a little too short, but as I zoom in, as I zero in on it, rather, you can see I can get it lined up just perfectly on the edge of this ellipse. If I zoom in, you can see that, hey, I've actually nailed it pretty well. Um, it takes a little bit of practice getting those guidelines in just the right spot, uh, but by not putting them on all four sides, it gives you that wiggle room to be able to pull it out just a little bit more, push it in a little bit more. Uh, cool thing here, too, is let's say I wanted to uh, remove this center part of the hubcap. I can also put a guideline here and drag a guideline down here. And then I'm going to use my Option key. So I'm going to hold the Option key down and make a little circle here, or an ellipse rather. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to stretch it and manipulate it until I've got it lined up just perfectly. It'll let go. And now you can see my selection here. Uh, now to get rid of those guides, if you don't want to see them, whoops, helps if you can see the picture, uh, we've got a view. Clear guides. Now there's two reasons we want to clear the guides. Uh, one is just it looks better. Uh, these will not show up in the final printed piece, by the way, but they're kind of distracting. But the other two is if you're using other selection tools, uh, those tools will, if they get close to one of these guides, try to snap to it. So when we're done with those guides, it's best to just go ahead and clear them out of the way. Now let's make a selection or let's make an adjustment here so you can see what we did. Brightness contrast. And you can see that it's affecting just the part that we selected. Pretty cool, huh? Now, here's an interesting thing. We can use our selection tools, by the way, to select everything but what we selected. Kind of strange, huh? Let's say I wanted to affect everything in this picture except for this wheel. Well, the easiest way to do that is to do what we've done so far, select the wheel, and then tell it to select everything except that. Uh, there's a menu up here called Select, and we're going to take a look at the, a lot of the options under Select in greater detail later on. Uh, but there's one called Inverse, and what that does, if I click on it, you'll notice, see how a dotted line appeared around the edge of my picture? What happened here is uh, we decided to say select everything except for what we just selected. Uh, let me make an adjustment here again, and you'll be able to see uh, what it is that uh, we've affected. Notice everything except that wheel. Notice the center part is, is changing too. So uh, when we invert our selection, it allows us to do that. So a lot of times it's easier to select the parts you don't want and flip that around. 
So remember, all our uh, different options here, we have the Option key for Subtract from a Selection, we have the Shift key to Add to a Selection, uh, we have the uh, Select Inverse, which is Shift-Command-I, um, and we can manipulate back and forth all of the ways that we can select this. Um, so uh, there's a, a nice useful application for the ellipse tool.